So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you guys for, for joining us for our first ever robotics live webinar. This is going to be episode one. Um, this is going to be on how to use AeroView. It's, it's basically a training session um, so that we can show you guys how to identify problem areas in your orchards early on and give you the tools to direct you straight to those problem areas. Um, so that you can see what the root of the problem is. So just a couple of introductions first and foremost. Um, we've got our guest speaker, Andre Rosanoff, here with us from the University of Stellenbosch. I'm going to introduce him in a second. Just about the team, I'm JC van der Waal, Client Success Manager. We've got also Siswek Nene with us, Client Success Agent. We've got Devin Osborne, our in-house agronomist. Sadiq Jacobs here as well, he's our lead drone operator and his team has worked hard to uh, get this data together for us for this first webinar. So thank you guys a lot. Andre, thank you for joining us and uh, welcome. You are um, all the way from Moscow, Russia, is that, is that it? Uh, how long have you been in South Africa? Thank you, JC. Uh, it's been a long time. I've been here since 95, so yeah. it's more than 20 years that I've been working in South Africa with main focus on soils yeah. and uh, their interaction with plants, uh, the understanding of the soil fertility, uh, soil management practices, carbon stocks, all sorts of yeah. things uh, that uh, can help the farmers, but that can also impede the production. Yeah. So uh, there was a lot of work done and uh, we're looking forward to these new developments with AI robotics to see uh, the new ways of doing things on the farm. Awesome, perfect. Yes, we look, uh, we're looking forward to have you with us today. Um, I think you'll be able to, to give us some good insights when we run through the system. Um, for, for those of you that are joining us that do not really know what aerobotics is about, so um, it's a web-based platform and we help farmers identify prob problem trees in their orchards early on. Um, AeroView, along with AeroView Scout, then helps the farmers and gives them all the tools to then go straight to those problem areas or those problem trees and then see what's causing the issues there. Um, so that's what we do. Um, and we are, we are across South Africa. We've actually got a couple of international clients. We're in about 11 different countries. Um, so yeah, but without further ado, um, the next step is I'm going to show you guys an actual live AeroView account. I'm going to run you through it and show you how you can identify the problem areas on your farm, how to set up a scout, how to use also our AeroView scout app. Um, before we jump into it, for all of you that have not yet downloaded our mobile AeroView scout, App, you can jump onto the Google Play Store or also your um, iOS store, and then you can go and look for AeroView Scout and download the, the AeroView Scout mobile app. So let's jump straight into our live demo account. So this is actually a citrus farm that we're having a look at, and this is the AeroView dashboard, first and foremost. So we giving the farmers on the air review dashboard that you can see on the top left over here a quick overview of what's going on in their farm we can actually see that they've flown 12 out of the 13 orchards with the drone collected data there we also show them which is the healthiest orchard on the farm and then we also show them the numbers of the number of trees that was counted on the farm a couple of scout missions that's been done and a couple of extra overlays of, of what's been happening on the farm. This is just the, the dashboard to, to show them quickly what's been going on. Um, but let's jump to monitor crop performance. I think we're going to spend the most time over here. Um, so at Aerobotics, we basically use two tools to collect data for your farm. Number one, we use a satellite and then number two, we use drone obviously. Um, the difference between the two satellite data is just a much lower resolution. We're looking at a 10 meter by 10 meter resolution. And if we jump to drone, which I'll, I'll show you in a bit, we're looking at a three centimeter pixel. So it's much higher resolution. 
um, we go into a much more detail over here. But let's look at satellite data first and foremost. So you'll see at the top left over here, we're on satellite for this farm now. Um, and we're looking at the health of this farm. So clearly you can see there's a, there's a, rather a lot of green and then also a lot of um, yellow, white, and then red on the, on the picture here. So how do we interpret the satellite data that we give the clients? So let's zoom in and look at this orchard over here. So obviously your darker green areas is your areas with a higher health we, or higher NDVI as such, um, a plant health. And then your areas that's a little bit more towards the white side, maybe then again orange and then ultimately red is your areas that's under a bit more stress. So how do we actually um, interpret this kind of data? I always tell the clients that um, we need to, there's, there's two main things. We need to look for variance within one orchard. We're never gonna compare one orchard to another orchard. Um, for the simple reason that the orchard next to it might be a completely different crop. It might be much younger. Um, it might be an absolutely different cultivar. So again, we're looking for variance within one block. And um, we are also going to, so if we, if we look at this block, for instance, we can see clearly there in the middle, there's a shade that's a bit lighter green that might reflect something. Andre, I don't know, you can see the lighter area over there. I mean, in, in your case, yes, looking at satellite data, what would, you, what would your comments be on something like that? Um, it's always a little difficult to understand what is happening until you look on the ground yeah. and see what the problem is. So uh, doing verification visit is probably the most important thing. Absolutely. But in most cases, when you do see uh, some anomalies, it means there is some kind of problem and it does require your attention. Yeah. And that is the most important thing that imagery gives you, information that your attention is required. Absolutely, yes. And in this case, what we have to remember is this is early problem detection. So this might be a case where the farmer was not aware of a big variance within one orchard. And like Andrea said, this imagery has now made them aware and they can then go into the field and see what's causing this variance to, to rectify that. So again, this is health, but we also give our clients a moisture index. So if I go to the top left over here, I'll click on moisture. And now we're going to look at the moisture content for this farm. So there's a couple of things I just need to, to, to let our guys know again. So we're looking at the moisture of the plant, not the moisture of the soil. I think that's very useful to remember. And again, the same as with the health, we're looking for variance within one orchard. We're not going to compare one orchard or one block to another block. We're going to look for variance. And Andre, I think you can clearly see there's also a lighter shade of blue, which means that area's got a, a lower moisture index compared, I would say, to the bottom over here, which looks like it might have a higher moisture index. So clearly over there, um, you know, there's, there, there's a lower moisture index. There's, there's less moisture in the plants over there, which um, can be interesting. And then we need the farmers to go and have a look. Um, what do you think? Well, uh, there may be some very simple explanations for, to that. For example, yeah. one block may have been watered today and the other one yesterday. So, uh, and that is the information that the farmer obviously has. Yeah. But um, on the other hand, uh, this variation in moisture content within the block uh, may give you some very important signals. Uh, maybe you need to check the irrigation system and make sure that the water delivery is working properly throughout the orchard. Absolutely. Maybe there are some blocked sprinklers or drippers or something of that sort that uh, will show as a dry spot continuously. Yeah. Um, then, uh, of course, uh, there are uh, problems that may be simply associated with uh, soil conditions and uh, say one part of the block continuously stays slightly drier than the other sections. 
uh, that means that you may need to actually adjust the design of your irrigation system. And uh, this adjustment can be very simple. You may just need to add an extra sprinkler or yeah. an extra dripper on the line to make sure that you have sufficient water supply in that area. Yeah, that Maybe water just runs off too quickly. It, it may be a slightly uh, sort of elevated position. So, uh, again, this is a very good indication for your water management tool. And uh, on the other hand, if you look at the moisture in the canopy, uh, it is strongly related to uh, your production because uh, evaporation of water through foliage yeah. is directly related to photosynthesis, the assimilation and the growth of plant by assimilating uh, carbon dioxide. So uh, obviously the better is the moisture in the canopy, it means that the better is your plant is functioning, the better it works, the better it grows. So uh, this gives you an indication that in stressed plants, which show you sort of in light green in your NDVI yeah. and light blue here, we may have slightly slower uh, growth. Yeah. And that may be related, for example, to the fact that uh, the plants are still small. You know, so in the young orchard, you will have a uh, naturally smaller NDVI. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that does not necessarily mean it's a warning sign, but it's only a warning sign for the farmer who knows that, say, for example, he has two blocks of the same age, and one of them is obviously much drier than the other and is not growing very well. Yeah, absolutely. I think we need to look, like you were saying, for, for either if the two blocks are the same age and the same cultivar, then you can kind of compare them. Or within one block, where those variances are picked up. And I think, again, what we have to, to mention here is this is early problem detection. So sometimes the farmers will not be aware of um, areas of a lower moisture index. And now using this technology, they can now see, okay, these blocks have a lower moisture content. I think another very valuable fact is when we look at satellite data that is is that this data gets pulled into account on a weekly basis so it's important to remember that this data is however cloud cover dependent so if there's more than 20 percent cloud cover we do not put this data into the farmer's account for the simple reason that it will not be 100 percent accurate and we need to give you as our clients accurate data but let's look at the different dates so if I select at the top left over here, click on the dates, all the dates that's highlighted will then show dates where there's different satellite data. Let's look at the 4th of July, for instance. Just give it a second to load. So now we can again pick up where there's variance of moisture index. On within one block and now the farmer can make an easier decision to say listen from this week to the next or from last week to this week we're having issues within this specific block we need to go and have a look and like you said maybe adjust the irrigation system um, so this is in terms of the health and the moisture index when we look at satellite data um, what I also want to show our clients is we give you three years worth of backdated satellite data. So all you have to do to get that for the specific block is you click on the graph at the bottom left that says fetch satellite data. You can enlarge the graph and now you can compare for the specific block one year to the next and to the third year. So let's say we just want to have a look at 2017 and 2018. We can now compare the moisture index for 2017 to 2018, which is a very useful tool. And now you have got a lot of data to go back on, which is very helpful. So that's it in terms of satellite data. I think where we as aerobotics add the most value is when we actually look at drone data. So, to look at drone data, you're simply going to click the drone tab at the top left over here. And we are on the visual map layer that you'll see over there. 
So let's zoom in a bit and so that I can show you the high resolution visual imagery. So again, compared to satellite data, this is a much higher resolution. We're looking at a three centimeter pixel. So you can almost look at it on a per leaf basis. You have a clear visual picture of what's going on on your farm. And you can almost, by looking at the visual, pick up where there's variance within your orchard. But I do have to say, I think, again, we as aerobotics add a lot more value when we can add a data point to each individual tree. So how do we do that? First and foremost, our special algorithms, special software, identify each tree within your orchard. Let's have a look at that. So when I'm on visual and I click on the tree health data, this will show me the number of trees within my orchard. This I can find bottom left. For this orchard, we've got 664 trees within this orchard. This is all automatically identified with our software. And now what we've gone and done is we've actually taken out the background noise and we've assigned a health index to each individual tree. So your trees with a darker green dot is your trees with a higher health, a, it's healthier trees in essence. And then your trees that's more white and then maybe a bit orange and then ultimately all the way down to red is your trees that's under more stress. I think again, what we have to remember is that these trees that we show you now is trees that the farmer might not have been aware of as before. So this early problem detection, and this is how we help our farmers. I think a very nice tool, and Andre, maybe you can comment when, when I show them this, is we can actually now filter out when we click on the histogram at the bottom over here. So we can filter out all the sick trees or stressed trees as such. And now we get a good or clear indication of where within this orchard the potential problematic or stressed trees are. If I can comment on this particular picture, yeah. uh, I would say that first of all, we see very strong boundary effects on the top, bottom and left parts of the picture. So uh, this is essentially the effect of the road itself that uh, goes along the orchard. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, it limits the uh, rooting of the trees. They don't want to go into this compacted road surface. And as a result, the trees uh, get less water, probably a bit less nutrients and so on and so on. Yeah. So uh, in terms of management, you're not likely to solve this problem unless you sort of give them a bit more water and a bit more nutrients uh, on the boundaries. Okay, that makes sense. Um, but uh, what would be more interesting for the farmer is the presence of uh, a few weaker trees in the middle of the orchard. And uh, yes, in that area. And there you will actually have to inspect uh, th these trees, see what is happening. Yeah. Uh, because uh, sometimes, uh, this weak condition of trees may be an indication, of, for example, pest invasion yeah. or uh, disease breakout. And that's when you need to take a serious action. Yeah. It may be also related to poor performance of the irrigation system. We have seen on the moisture map that also within this uh, central area, the uh, canopy moisture was a bit lower. Correct. Uh, it may be because the canopy is actually very thin and that's why it has so little moisture. Yeah. So uh, it's probably poor tree development altogether, as you say, poor health condition of the tree. Absolutely. So it needs on-site inspection to understand what is going on and what corrective measures you need to introduce. Yeah, and I think, and I will jump into this in, in one second, um, but we actually, that's, that, that's why we've got the scouting app out there. And I'll show you how to set up a scout to go and investigate these potential trees that we've just identified. But um, these two systems talking to each other is a perfect tool to now go and investigate what's going on on the ground. But before we go to the actual scouting side of things, I want to also show you two more things. So when you filter out these 
potential problematic trees, you can see that the number of trees also changes. So now you can see there's 144 of the 664 trees within this orchard. It looks like it's a bit under more stress. So now you've got a good percentage idea of how this orchard is performing. One last thing, Andre, that I want to show you as well is we also give the farmers the canopy size of each tree. So again, it displays a number of trees and the color scheme for the canopy area here is the darker dots is the trees with a lower canopy. The more we move to a lighter shade of blue and then ultimately white is the trees that's got a larger canopy, right? So again, you'll see at the bottom over here on the histogram, you can filter out the trees if you want to look at just the lower canopy or maybe the larger canopy trees. And the canopy size on, on, on AeroView is measured in square meters. So if we want to have a look just at the smaller trees, we can click the filter. And now we can see where those smaller trees within this orchard is. And I think this is also an extremely useful tool. And a lot of our clients use this during the season. So maybe when they need to prune back a bit or at a crucial time for the fruit to get some good sunlight exposure, they can also cut back on the taller trees if they want to see where all the trees with a larger canopy is they can then filter out these trees and get their, their guys on the ground to go and have a look at these trees. Extremely useful tool, is this, Andre? Yes, exceptional. So, again, this is, this is a great tool that we've got over here. But, um, I mean, it was a couple of months ago the farmers were saying, JC, this is awesome tool to have. But, I mean, I'm sitting in my office. I'm looking at this type of data. I'm a farmer. I need to actually implement what I can see over here. I need to go and investigate what's causing these issues so that I can apply the correct measures. How do I take this data into the field? Now, this is when we've actually designed, developed the AeroView Scout app that I mentioned in the beginning of the webinar. I hope all of you guys have downloaded it. So let's have a look at how this platform can help you navigate straight to these trees that we've identified as potential problem trees at an early stage. So to do that, we're going to click at the bottom of the screen over here. It says plan and manage infield scouts, right? Now what we want to do is we actually want to guide ourselves as the farmers, our farm managers, or our dedicated day-to-day -day scouts to those trees to see what's going on. To do that, like I've mentioned, we go to plan and manage infield scouts. We'll click on the green plus at the top right over here. And for this specific orchard that we're looking at, we'll first put in a scout title. Let's call this scout title FCM scout. And when do we want ourselves or our managers or the dedicated scouts to actually go out. Let's say we want them to do their false calling moth scout on Friday the 31st. So we've selected the date. Now what we can do is we've identified the problem trees. Let's go and have a look. So we want to select this red tree over here first. By clicking on the tree, it will highlight the tree. We can see it gives you the tree stats, the health of the tree, the area of the tree, and also the exact GPS coordinates. Now we can click at the bottom left over here, add to scout. That's added the first tree to our scout mission. Let's go to the next tree. We wanna go and look at that tree as well. Again, it gives you the health index, the canopy area, the exact GPS coordinates, add to scout. Next tree gives you the health, the canopy area in square meters, GPS, add to scout. Let's look at one last tree. We'll click on that one. It will highlight the tree. It will give you the health, the canopy area, the exact coordinates, add to scout. Now we've successfully added these four trees to our first scouting mission that we want to go and investigate on the ground. And I will then say, save scout mission. The scout mission will then be saved. So let's look at our plan and manage scout dashboard. Clearly you can see over here, this is the scout that we've just planned. 
We've planned it for field 53B. This is the date. We want the scouts to go investigate. And you can see that the status there is still incomplete. Simple reason is the scouts haven't actually gone out, obviously, and go and do the scouting mission. So I will show you in one second how to use the AeroView scouting app as well. Um, you can also see at the bottom over here, it will show you the completed scouts. So this is after the scouts have gone into the field, go log their pests, disease, potential irrigation issues, and taken photos. Once they've synced that back up, you'll come back to your plan and manage infield scout dashboard to come and view what's going on. So now you've set up the scout route. What will happen next is your scout will get a notification that a new scout mission has been planned for him, right? So what you're looking at over here is the interface of AeroView Scout app. So this is once I'm logged in. So we'll send out yourself as the farmer, the managers, or maybe the scout to the field. They will use this and this scout app, you have to remember can be used offline. It will direct you to those potential trees that you've just highlighted, just using GPS. So how does this work? I will click on scout mode, the green button at the bottom there. And now myself as a scout can see there's one scout mission that has been planned for us. Let's click on scout missions and I will go click on aerobotics scout. Now I can see there's a couple of trees that was identified by the farmer that needs to be looked at. So what will happen is the GPS of the mobile device will direct the scout to each individual tree. Once the blue dot of the GPS shows that the scout is at that exact tree, you will click on the blue plus where he will then be able to make a note, select from a list of pests, and then he can add pest number. We'll click save. He can then select from disease. Once he saved the disease, he can say whether the threat is low, medium, or high. And then we can also look at weeds and potential irrigation issues, like Andre mentioned a little bit earlier on. And again, irrigation, we can log low, medium, or high, which is extremely valuable. There's also a voice note option for the infield scouts to, to make notes with. And then if they want, they can click at the bottom over here to take a photo if they are not 100% sure of what's going on and then they will click save. Once they've completed the scout and they've visited each of the trees that you have highlighted for them, they will then click on the green button at the bottom again. They will say complete scout. And now AeroView Scout will prompt them to sync the data with the orange button over there. So they click sync data, so this they'll obviously do once they're back in the office or have got good reception again. Now you can see that that data has been synced up. So if I refresh my page over here, I'm doing this for the simple reason that this might be a day or two later that the farmer will log back on. And now you can see the aerobotic scout has actually been completed. The status here was incomplete earlier, but now the scout has gone out, visited those markers, and completed the scout mission. You can see that he's actually identified an irrigation issue over here. And then let's look at this one, for instance, that they've gone and done. You can now click view the scout on the map. So now you can clearly see what these farmers have actually found in field. Let's have a look. So if we zoom in at this point over here, the farmer's actually found, so he's, he's located a pest marker. And, and again, what we have to remember is each marker that you drop is geo-referenced, right? 
So you'll know exactly where in your orchard these potential problems is coming from and what they are. So you can clearly see at the bottom over here, they found red scale. The farmer said sick tree at the bottom left over here, busy dying, dead tree. And the scouts have also taken a couple of photos. So you can clearly see the dead tree they are referring to. And if we look at this tree over here that the farmer has marked, he mentioned that he found red scale over there again, sickly trees, scruffy trees, and also dead wood. If we look at the pictures that they found over there. Andre, you mentioned earlier that um, to be able to get into the field and actually see what's going on is extremely important. Do you think this is a useful tool? Well, I think it is, uh, especially considering that uh, if you may have a rather large orchard and you don't want to expect uh, every line of trees uh, every two days, yeah. then it's definitely uh, a way to go and uh, it's very helpful to um, quickly locate and uh, target the uh, problem areas in the orchard. If you only have one sort of uh, tree next to your house, I suppose uh, it's fine. You can just look at it every day. Yeah, <laughs> but, exactly. Uh, once you have a big production system, that's a different story altogether. No, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, I think this makes a, a big difference, um, especially like you mentioned earlier, on your bigger farms where you've got a lot of orchards and a lot of trees that you need to look at. It yes. makes a lot of, yeah. lot of difference. And it, uh, of course, saves you uh, a lot of uh, time and uh, labor in terms of identifying the problem. Yeah. Because uh, actually inspecting it uh, personally yeah. uh, may be very time consuming. No, absolutely. Um, and, and like Andre, like we were speaking earlier, I'm going to show the guys now. I think another step after this that's super important is we need to aggregate this type of data in some form of report mm -hmm. so that the farmers can make informed decisions and also plan for the coming week and to do that we've actually built in a download report function so if your scouts have gone out and done a successfully completed a scout mission you would click on download scout report over here you would select what type of report you'd want to download let's say pest report, you'd select the date range that you want the report to be downloaded for, and then you'd click download report. Um, let me just give you an example of what a typical report like this would look like. So this is a report that has been done for a form, so you can see it was a pest report, ants, mealybug, thrips, fruit flies, and FCM, false coddling moth. Um, Andre, just looking at, at this picture, um, we can clearly pick up, for instance, that there's a large number of thrips that this farmer has found for this specific week. Um, and this can cause, obviously, a lot of problems. But now they've been able to identify where on the farm. The this earlier you can localize it, uh, the, the better, because uh, you really need to uh, implement measures quite rapidly. Yeah. And uh, unlike diseases, pests can also spread, spread very, very rapidly. Yeah. So uh, the sooner you uh, identify the problem, uh, the more rapidly you apply intervention measures, uh, the less uh, pesticide you will require. And... Uh, the smaller will be your production loss. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think the fact that we can give the clients kind of a map overview of where on your farm these potential areas is located. They can maybe decide, listen, this is time for a quick spot spray, or maybe we actually do need a full-on blanket spray. The thing is, uh, in terms of this uh, app altogether, uh, with larger farms, uh, it may be really very time consuming to do regular inspections of individual trees. Yeah. And uh, there are always a lot of things to do on the farm. No, absolutely. So uh, you're really saving a lot of time uh, on inspections and uh, allowing time for other activities. 
while you actually have the system continuously monitored. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. Definitely. Um, so, I mean, besides the fact that we give them a farm overview, there's also the table. So now you can see in which exact orchard, what the number of markers that was located over there and the total pest count. So if we look on this farm, for instance, at A orchard, we see there was 10 markers dropped for thrips in that specific orchard with a total count of 64 pests in that area, which is obviously a higher count. So that's why we've highlighted this in, in red. So extremely useful tool for the farmers to actually plan ahead to see what's coming. Do you agree? To plan ahead uh, what's coming and to uh, most importantly plan interventions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because uh, if you have a breakout in uh, one uh, tree and you have spotted it, you, you saved the whole orchard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these diseases and, and can spread quite quick, obviously, to identify mm -hmm. them early on is key. Yes. So this is in terms of the scouting app and the reporting that we give you guys. Um, I think in terms of navigating around on AeroView, for those of you that is existing AeroView clients, I would like to show you one or two examples of a couple of key features that you can also look at. So if you've got two, three, four, five farm managers that you would like to have access to this type of data, I would suggest that you can click share this form. And once you click on share this form, it will ask you to enter an email address and you can just enter that farm manager's email address and he will have access to this account as well. And he'll be able to help you manage these early detected problems much more effectively. Um, so then also if you have your own drone um, and with our interview platform, we prefer the DGI product range as a visual uh, data collection tool. You can also click here to upload your own drone data. And then you can also, if you don't have your own drone, request a drone service by clicking at the top right over here, request a drone service tab. Now, what I also have to mention is the frequency of drone flights. So we get this question quite often. And at Aerobotics, we would advise clients to at least fly three times per season. That is to collect enough data at the specific phenological stages of the tree's lifespan. Now, if you are on the correct stages, you do collect that data, then you can make early decisions to help you maximize those trees within your orchard. And at ultimately, we also want to help you not only maximize the yield, but help you save costs. So again, um, we would advise you guys do at least three drone flights throughout the season. And it's as simple as clicking request a drone service. And one of our drone operators will, we will put one of our drone operators in touch with you and come and fly your orchard within uh, two days of your selected request and um, you will have your data soon after that. For those of you that wants to play around a bit more and just to show you some useful functionality, if you click at the top three dots at the top left over here, you can actually edit your boundaries. So click over there. Now you'll see it actually highlights the individual boundaries. Once you scroll across them, you can click at the field name tab. And if you want to change the specific field name to let's say test one, we can just type it there. We can change the cultivar from crop type, let's say from orange to grapefruit. And it gives you the size in hectares we can delete this orchard if you'd like. But most importantly, what we have to remember is every time that you've made any change, to click the save tab at the far right over here. So now this is saved. We've called the test one grapefruit and you can do that with each of your orchards. Also important to remember, you can manually click on your orchards if you want to move them around play around a bit, it's very easy and effective 
for those of you that has an area view account to change your boundary sizes like that again most important to remember is to click the save changes far right if you want to add extra fields that's not on area view at the moment top left the big green plus we will put in the field name and i'll call this test two crop type let's say lemon i would click draw polygon and now i can just click on the four corners of that block i would say save again and that field will be saved as test two as you can see at the bottom there so there's a couple of very easy functionalities to that you can use as a farmer to to expand your area view account um, and you're in full control to to add orchards to take away orchards obviously um, we advise to not change any of the orchards that's already been flown with a drone um, but yes that's 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 in a nutshell how we help clients identify problem areas early on and um, then give them access to the scouting app to to see what's going on yes andre uh, i would say that uh, this sharing option is uh, particularly important for many farmers who uh, work with specialist consultants yeah if you uh, work with an irrigation engineer uh, and a pest control company yeah and so on that would be helping you with managing say irrigation or pests yeah then uh, by sharing this information with them uh, especially after scouting yeah uh, they can plan their visits and interventions absolutely yes yes no I, I agree and I think a lot of our farmers is using that the app like this um, to share it with specialist consultants like you mentioned before and we'd encourage the guys to do that as well to, to get people to advise them on that um, so again in a nutshell this is the the power of the air review platform this is what we provide the guys um, to identify those problem areas and then to get straight to those individual trees and then identify what's what's causing the, the problems so last but not least um, we as we ending this, um, this, this 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 webinar um, we, we just want to say a big thank you to everyone that's actually taken about an hour of their day over lunch to join us for this live webinar and like we've sent out to you guys we've promised a 20 percent discount for each of the farmers that's that's logged on and taken the time out of their day so if you look at the screen over here you can see um that the 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 code to so if you want to apply the 20 percent discount this will be your code a w one e zero eight one eight and to use this code you can just go to if you don't have a air view account yet you can go to air view www.aerobotics.io you can apply this when you set up your farm for those of you that have an account um, you can just simply when you click request a drone service it'll ask you for a promotional code and you can just enter AW1E0818 and you'll receive a 20% discount on a seasonal package. And our seasonal package at the moment includes three drone flights. So again, thank you guys for, for joining us. This was episode one. Episode two for our air review webinar will be airing within the next month and we have some very exciting news to share with you guys so we'd really encourage you to jump on for season uh, for episode two and we're really looking forward to to share this exciting news with you guys and we think um, each and every one of you that's farmers will really enjoy this but um, we will send out more communications on that Andre, thanks a lot for joining us, taking some time out of your day and traveling all the way from Stellenbosch and to join us for this webinar. It was a great pleasure. Thank you. It's very interesting for me too.